to the word of God. We have very few minutes, but we'll endeavor to move fast as the Lord enables us. Let's go to the book of Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. This is our theme chapter for our theme this year. So we will uh, spend more time there because we want to understand the context. We want to understand the scope. We want to understand the focus that the Lord is giving us in this particular theme. Are you there? When you get there, say amen. Romans chapter 15, verse 20. I want to read verse 20 to 29. I want to pray that our media team can help us so that those of us who might have not carried your Bibles, you can be able to follow together with us. I want us to read the NIV. Um, in case you have not found it, uh, we can just read together from the screens and the Lord will bless us. Romans 15, 20 to 29, this is what the Bible says. It has always been my ambition to preach the gospel where Christ was not known. Turn to your neighbor and tell them it has always been my ambition. Tell them a little bit more. It has always been. Now, I didn't tell you to repeat what I'm saying. I say, tell your neighbor. So you turn and look at your neighbor and you tell them these words. Okay? Okay, tell your neighbor, it has always been my ambition. Now ask your neighbor, it has always been your ambition to do what? So that's very key. That's where we're going to spend a lot of time today looking at um, uh, because we're going to be talking about uh, the power of ambition in taking new territories. So this is what the Bible says. It has always been my ambition to preach the gospel where Christ was not known so that I would not be building on someone else's foundation Rather, as it is written, those who are not told about him will see, and those who have not heard will understand. This is why I have often been hindered from coming to you. But now that there is no more place for me to work in these regions, and since I have been longing for many years to visit you, I plan to do so when I go to Spain. I hope to see you while passing through and to have you assist me on my journey, on my journey there, after I have enjoyed your company for a while. Now, however, I am on my way to Jerusalem in the service of the Lord's people there. For Macedonia and Achaia were pleased to make a contribution for the poor among the Lord's people in Jerusalem. They were pleased to do it, and indeed they owe it to them. For if the Gentiles have shared in the Jews' spiritual blessings, they owe it to the Jews to share with them their material blessings. So after I have completed this task and have made sure that they have received this contribution, I will go to Spain and visit you on the way. I know that when I come to you, I will come in the full measure of the blessings of Christ. And our Father... We commit your word to your hands that God you may speak to us and that our minds may comprehend your wisdom and the insights of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. We began this year by looking at the theme that God has given us. God is challenging us through his word that it is time to take new territories. We began on reflecting on this chapter of Romans 15 and looking at key things that shaped Paul's ministry, that made Paul's, Paul take new territories. We actually realized that Paul was a territory taker. He took territories in the name of the Lord and to the glory of Jesus. We began at looking key aspects that can be derived from this portion of scripture. We began by looking at the power of contesting. We said territories are not given, territories are taken. And we said for us to be able to take a territory, we need to contest for it. We need to get in the ring and, you know, get it uh, by the power of God. 
We also spoke about the power of perspective and we said the perspective you hold, the mental frame in which you interpret reality is very key for you when it comes to taking your territories. And then we talk about the power of sight where we say the, far, the more you are able to see with clarity, the more you are able to take your territories. We said there are three main ways in which you can be able to see. We said, number one, you can see with your naked eyes. Number two, we said you can be able to see with your inner mind, which we, occasionally, or which we often call vision. And number three, we, can, we said you can see by faith. And we said your ability to see, your ability to, um, you know, to be able to picture out things before they happen and craft a vision for yourself is very key to the territories that you want to take. And we kept on asking each other, what do you see? This is a conversation I pray that will continue in our homes. Keep on asking your spouse, what do you see? Um, keep on asking your children what they see until they are able to get to a place where they can build a strong vision and the ability to see the future the way God sees it and the Lord will truly bless us. Today I want us to briefly talk about the power of ambition. The power of ambition because ambition is very key. Most of the people who have made significant contribution to our world were a people of ambition. They were ambitious people. Most of the people that have been able to do th significant things were a people that were full of ambition. Paul himself testifies to us that he was a man of ambition. He says, it has always been my ambition to preach the gospel where Christ was not known. Please notice he said, it has always, always means it is a continued activity. Every time, this ambition is never waning. This ambition is never dying. Every day, this ambition lingers in his mind and his heart. He says, it has been my ambition to preach the gospel where Christ has not been known. It has been a consistent thing in him. I want you to, um, to turn around again and look at your neighbor and ask, tell them again, it has always been my ambition. Now, I want you to ask yourself, to say to yourself, do you have a notebook? Do you have a place you can write? Now I want you to write this. It has always been my ambition. It has always been my ambition. Then put a dash. It has always been my ambition to put a dash. Then fill that dash. What has always been ambition? What is that ambitious thing? That idea that lingers in your heart so every now and then that you would want to accomplish. Some of you are not writing, but um, after the service, I will be passing by to check what you have written uh, so that I see whether you are ambitious. Is that a good thing? Amen. Now, let's, let's do this, actually. Let's do this. Huh? Um, have you written something down? Show your neighbor. Show your neighbor, unless it is secret. If you don't want anybody to know your ambition, don't show your neighbor. But just show your neighbor. It is good sometimes to have a witness. It has always been my ambition to dash. Now, this whole of this week, I want you to pray for that ambition. I want you to grow it within your heart. And I want you to ponder, meditate, and think about it continuously. And pray that God will allow you to get to the place where you want to be. To be. Ambition is a potent force that drives individuals to achieve exceptional feats. Ambition is that inner drive, that inner drive that pushes you to be able to get to where you want to go. It, ambition, it can also be defined as a strong desire to achieve or to accomplish something, a strong desire, unconquerable, unquenchable, and 
unstoppable desire within that drives you to achieve a particular goal in your life. Ambition manifests in our pursuit of success. Ambition manifests in our pursuit of recognition for those who want to be recognized. And ambition manifests well in our pursuit for personal growth. It is that earnest desire for achievement or for distinction. People who are ambitious want to be distinguished from the rest. They want to stand out from the crowd. People who are ambitious are not a people that just follow what everybody else is doing, but there are people who are driven by this inner force, looking forward to achieve the things that have been put before them. And Paul says he has an ambition. Paul is an ambitious person, has this inner drive, has this ardent desire to see the gospel preached in places where it has not been preached before. Say amen. amen. The defining characteristic of ambition is the desire to succeed, is the desire to go forward. It's that intrinsic motivation within you that pushes you to go beyond where you have been. I looked at the Cambridge Dictionary just to understand a little bit more about uh, ambition. And, 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 and the, the Cambridge Dictionary has a very simple definition, yet very loaded one. It says, ambition is a strong wish to achieve something. It's a strong wish to achieve something. If you take a close look, you will see that Ambition requires two simple elements. Number one is that there must be a goal. Because the thing that you want to achieve is the goal that you have set for yourself. And number two, there must be a desire to achieve it. Ambitious people set a goal. They say, this is what I want to do. This is my aim. This is the purpose of my living. This is the mission that I want to undertake. And then beyond setting the goal, they have that inner drive, that inner desire, that unstoppable, unquenchable desire to ensure that that goal is met. Now notice, if you, have, if you miss any one of these two components, your ambition is misplaced. Ambition, proper ambition is based on a goal. What do I want to achieve? What is that which I want to do? And then on top of that goal, there is an ardent desire to ensure that that goal is achieved. Many people set goals. Sometimes some of them write as very good goals down, but there is no inner push. There is no desire to bring it to, uh, uh, to pass. And therefore, at the end of the day, their ambitious plans end up going to the archives where people will refer to them as dreams that never came to pass. But this year I pray that every goal that God has given us will not go to the archives as a, as a dream that was never achieved. But truly it will go to the annals of history as a desire that was actually brought to pass because there were ambitious people that did it. Say amen. Ambition is the force that separates those who settle for mediocrity from those who strive for greatness. Our people who are looking forward to greatness are ambitious people. They are unstoppable. But the people who are mediocres, mediocres, people who settle for mediocrity lack ambition. They lack drive. Sometimes they do things out of compassion for duty, not because they really want to see the things that they are doing coming to pass. Say amen. amen. To harness the full potential of your ambition, it is crucial, as we have said, to set your goal. Set a goal. What do I want to do? Paul had goals. He says clearly, I will preach from Jerusalem to Illyricum. Paul had clearly defined this goal. And he said, my goal is, I will preach from Jerusalem 
all the way to Illyricum. I will make sure every space, every city, every small town in this particular geographical location is receiving the gospel that comes from the Lord. He says, I will preach where others have not preached. Paul set a, a target. He said, I am not just going to preach where other people are preaching. I don't want to build myself on foundations that others have already laid. He said, I will go where others do not want to go. We looked at it earlier on and we discovered majority of the other disciples were just concentrating around Jerusalem and around Judea and a few of them around Samaria. But Paul says, I am not going to just keep on digging where everybody else in, is digging. I am going to establish myself in places where other people do not want to go. I will set out a new journey to set in things in places where nobody else has been before. Say amen. He sets that goal and he says, I am going to do it. Now, listen to me. One of the key things I've discovered that we fail is because everybody wants to build where everybody else is building. And Africans, we have these standards, especially Kenyans. We have this problem. If today I put a hardware here and I begin making a few coins and perhaps buy a motorbike, everybody wants to put a hardware next to mine. They just want to build where I have built. And because of that, we destroy the market. We end up, all of us, not being able to achieve much. Yet, even as we look at things like that, there are so many areas that have not yet been conquered. There are so many places where we are able to go and do much. People who do not set clear goals, people who are not ambitious, begin fighting for the little that is available. They begin fighting for the little that is available. Why? Because they are not ambitious enough to look at new territories and be able to take them. Say amen. They have a, a, a mind that is deprived of the ability to see new opportunities. That is why many people in, in, in Africa fight for inheritance. You find brothers after their father has died or has grown old, the only thing they know is the, the territory that their father founded. And therefore, the only way they take new territories is by capitalizing on the territory of their father. And they fight. And they fight for the little that is available. Yet they themselves can set out and spread themselves and be able to achieve. And some time ago, I noticed my angles. Some of them, my angles were fighting over the little wealth that their father left, my grandfather. And they were really fighting and pushing each other. Some of them becoming physical. of land. And I challenged them, I asked them, are you not men like your father? Are you not, are you not man enough? Can't you go out there and find something like your father found? Why must you fight and kill each other just because of what your father or your mother founded? Why don't you challenge yourself? Go out there. Be man enough. Work hard. Find something that is yours. Say amen. I challenge some of you, you, you are fighting forever in families just because of little inheritance that your father left behind. Are you not man enough to find yours? In fact, I'm challenging you, be man enough, find more. And those who are suffering and want to fight you, wambia ni mawabariki kule niyo. Na mkikuja nita waongezea. Because you have every ability to do things even better than your father did. Say amen. amen. Some of you are oppressed in your companies. You are there begging and begging. Yet what you do every day, you can do better if it was your own company. Tell them, thank you, I'm leaving you. Next time, ask them to come and you give them a contract. Because you can do better. Say amen. amen. I am challenging you this year. Be a territory taker. Amen. 
take a new territory to the glory of God. Say amen. amen. I was challenged some time ago by a certain um, elderly man I respect, a businessman, was employed by one oil company in this country. And it got to a place where they, the oil company said, oh, we have excess workers, we want to retrench people. And he was in charge of distribution. And he was very young. And he told me, he went to the manager, uh, the country director, and said, I am, I, I, even though I am young, I am offering to step down. Retrench me. And after retrenching me, give me business. Because he knew the way oil is distributed everywhere, petroleum products. He knew what needs to be done in the wool of the country. And he said, instead of fighting here with some old men who have no vision, because I'm a young man, I can step out there and even poach some of them and employ them. And today is a great distributor. He saw a new territory. Some of us places where we are, we don't need to continue suffering and fighting. We can, we can go out there and trail blaze and do things to the glory of God. Because God has given us the ability to see things and the ability to conceptualize them and to give him glory. Say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. You know, being sidetracked uh, being sidetracked is a great enemy to ambition. Sometimes when you are ambitious and when you begin to succeed in your ambition, you begin to be invited to things that look lucrative, things that will, will get you out of your track, things that will get you out of your ambition. When Paul began to grow, Paul began to be famous, Paul began to plant many churches, and the church in Rome began to call him, come and visit us. Come, we hear about you, come. Now by the time Paul is writing the book of Romans, he has never been to Rome. He has never met this church in Rome. But the church in Rome kept on telling them, we know you, why can't you come and visit us? Perhaps they were thinking he should come and become their pastor. You see, when you begin to succeed in your ambitious plans, you begin to be invited into places where you are actually, your calling is not there. And Paul said, no. Now remember, Rome is the capital of good things. It is the capital of prestige and class. Everyone wants to go to Rome. Everybody desires to be a pastor, to be a leader in Rome. But Paul knows that this is not my calling. Paul knows that this is not my calling. He had become a great man. Truly, he had become a great man. Surely, he should have considered going to Rome. This great church in the capital where wealth is, where fame is, where class is found. Listen to me. A lot of people lose their ambitious goals. Immediately, they begin growing a bit. And then they begin thinking that certain things that they were doing were not in their class. And they quickly begin losing track. They quickly begin losing focus. But Paul, being a man of principle, decided he's not going to be sidetracked from what he was doing. And that is why he was able to conquer everything. And he was able to take these territories. By the time he's writing this letter, he says, I have preached all the way from Jerusalem to Illyricum. Did I say Jerusalem? <laughs> Did I say Jerusalem? I think it is where I was yesterday. <laughs> yesterday I was in Sitam Kikuyu. And my friend said, Amen. To Hamwe. Tewo. Amen. So again, he says, he has already done this. He has covered from Jerusalem all the way. I got it right. All the way to Illyricum. He's already celebrating the milestones of where his ambitious heart has led him to. And by the time he's writing, it's very clear that much of the work has been done. Listen to me. If we are going to take territories, we've got to be a people of high levels of ambition. We've got to be ambitious people. We've got to develop that inner desire, that ardent resolve to ensure that our goals are met. 
Let me just give you a few things, characteristics of ambitious people. What are characteristics of ambitious people? Ambitious people are continually planning. They are continuously planning. They plan, they, revi they revise their plans. They set goals, they revisit them again. They are continuously, continuously. That's why Paul says always. My desire, it has always been my ambition to do this. Paul was a man that kept to his goal, but kept on revising it to ensure that it is successful. He was a man that will occasionally get back to his goals and look at them and revise them and harness every available opportunities to contribute towards that which he wanted to achieve. These kind of people, they are not afraid of visiting their plans so that they can achieve their goals. They are not just, they don't just set a goal and they are immovable. But as a first son, you know, there are people who set goals and they're like, my Zion, you cannot move them. Akikwama hapo, amekwama hapo. You try to tell them the market has shifted. No. Even if it shifts, to remain imara. That's how you lose your ambition. But Paul was such a kind of a man that knew how to look at things, revise his plans, revise his goals, so that he harnesses every available resource to ensure that that which he wants to do is done. Paul received a Macedonian call. And even though he was heading a particular direction, when he saw this man from Macedonia speaking to him, he revised his goal. He take, took it as a sign that God is giving him the side where he will easily succeed. And immediately he turns around and begins to focus in the area of Macedonia. He continued to do this work. He began his ministry. Paul, Paul began his ministry making tents. He began his ministry making tents. But then he discovered this financial fin model of financing my ministry will not take me far. You know, I've heard a lot of people tell, tell us, pastors, you know, Paul was a tent maker. You need to be a tent maker. Liar. That was the beginning. He began making tents and found that it was not sustainable to do ministry. You cannot make enough tents and bring many souls to Christ. When he was beginning his ministry, he made tents. When the ministry continued forward, he turned around to the fellowships that he had established and he asked them to fund his ministry. He learned that way. He changed his models. He changed his models of operation. He began by going from every synagogue in every town he went but whenever he went to synagogues people despised him and then he turned around his methodology and began for example in ephesus he went to the house of the hall of tyrannus and he set up a school there and he began to teach the word of god he was continually revising and replanning and ensuring that he harnesses every available resource and thought to, uh, to ensure that his goals are met Say amen. amen. And even now, when he says that he has preached all the way from Jerusalem to Illyricum, he says, my work is done. But he says, I'm going, not going to stop here. He says, now I am shifting to Spain. I am beginning a new venture. I am, might have preached in all the provinces of Macedonia, but that is not, even though I have accomplished much, I am not stopping. He was now beginning a new venture to go all the way to Spain and he was inviting the church of Rome to support him that is why he says after I finish delivering the collections I've done for the church in Jerusalem I will be going to Spain but I will pass by Rome so that I can spend some time with you and also you can fund my ministry you can support me as I go to the other, other uh, provinces of Spain whether he went or not because later on his story changes when he's arrested whether he was able to go or or not it is not very clear from from history but the honest truth is that he kept his ambition and he kept the part of his bargain to ensure that all this what he wanted will be achieved say amen, amen. number two characteristic of uh, a highly ambitious people is that they take risks they are risk takers they are risk takers are you a risk taker or are you a risk averse person risk averse individuals will generally 
take the lower part or the small part because they are, they are afraid of taking risks. There are people who are more concerned about safety than advancement. They want to remain in the comfort zone. People who want to remain in the comfort zone will end up being comfortable with less. But people who want to grow will be a people who would take risks. Will be a people who will take risks. Will be a people who will be able to go where the Lord wants them to go. Will take every available risk. Will be able to want to venture into new places. There will be a people that are not afraid to go where nobody else has gone. And listen to me. Whenever you are brave enough in faith and are willing to take a risk, are willing to walk in a path that nobody has walked before, with the help of the Lord, you will do extraordinary things. Say amen. amen. This year, we are going to take a risk. This year, we are going to take risks. This year, we will, be, we will not be a risk-averse people. We will not just settle for less because we are afraid of taking risk. Take a risk. Somebody says, actually, everything in, in life is a risk. When you get married, you, you risk getting divorced. Even living itself, as you live, you risk dying. So take the necessary risks and enter in places where nobody has entered before. Trust God for great things. Attempt great things for our God and the Lord will help you. Praise the name of the Lord. Now can I tell you something? The other day we, we communicated this ambition, this ambitious thought to us that we we would want to have a fellowship in Twala. And I think last Sunday, but one I announced here and I said, we don't have money for this, but we are willing to take the risk. And I said, those of you who have land or space that you may want to, to give us in Twala, you come forward and, and, and tell us. And I was surprised. My goodness. Sitam Rongai, you are the best. Oh my goodness, you are the best. Because a lot of people came forward. In fact, if this is how you treat your pastors, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I will be here. Yeah. Say amen. Yeah. I will be where? Yeah. And we will take risks together. Yeah. And conquer territories yeah. together. Amen. Yeah. Oh, praise the Lord. A lot of you came forward and said, Pastor, we want to participate. In fact, I think it was last week, but one. We went with the pastors and a few people from um, safari groups um, in um, Tuala and a few people from here. We gathered together and we, sell, we went to see the available pieces of land. Some people had given, some said, Pastor, I don't have much, but the little I have, I'm willing to give it out. My goodness, that's the spirit of the kingdom. That you, you will not be stopped because you think you have small. You will say, I will bring something. You are like that boy that said when, when, Jesus, when the disciples told Jesus we have nothing to feed people. But the boy said, I have, I have a few loaves of bread and fish. He was not afraid to say he has little. But listen to me. Whatever you think is little, when handed to the Lord Jesus, it multiplies. It feeds thousands. It changes people's lives. So we went around. We, we saw a few places. And then we went to this place. Say this place. And this person who has not authorized us to, 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 to talk about who he or she is. I'm also very careful not to say he or she so that you don't know she or he. <laughs> Went and said, I have learned. I'm willing to give this land for the church and the fellowship to begin here and to grow for as long as it will establish. And I'm not demanding any single shilling. My goodness. We were surprised. And then we went and we saw the land. It is good. It is a very strategic place. In fact, the brethren from that area, from the Bible studies from that area, after we arrived there, we prayed together, we looked at the land. They told, me, they told us, pastors, let us not go anywhere else. In fact, that is where our journey ended. We never went anywhere else because we said 
we are settled. Say amen. amen. So we already have space in Twala. Amen. Two acres. Amen. How many? Can I tell you the location? Yes. I mean, what is the name of this school? Precious. Yes. You know where Precious James is? Yes. Just next. <laughs> Say amen. So we are going to take this territory. We will take every necessary risk. Now, in Sitam, we've never had a campus church for any of our churches around. But the fact that somebody else has not done it does not mean that it cannot be done. We will be the first. Amen. Say amen. We will, we will be trailblazers. We will set a model so that others can follow. Because we are Sitam, Rongai. Say we are sit and do it like this. We are sit yes. Say it with a hoof. We are sit yes. We are trailblazers. Say we are trailblazers. Yes. We are ambitious. Yes. We are unstoppable. Yes. We are empowered. Yes. We can take territories. Yes. And we will take. Say amen. amen. So we are we are getting ready. We we have a, uh, I was talking with a few elders and we are going to involve more. We will we'll go there again, the elders and the pastors pray. And, uh, and then from there, we'll begin establishing the fellowship. Now, one of these Sundays, we will tell you, once we consult with the elders, we will tell you which Sunday, after the second service, all of us, we will go there. Sometimes you have to arrive big. You have to land. Say amen. And they say, we have come. We don't do small things, oh, because we don't serve a small God. We don't do small things. We will arrive and make a declaration. Because there are so many brethren there who can come, not come to church. My goodness, we went there. The place is far. And there are people who are farther. Places called Rangao. Sounds like Illyricum. All the way to Illyricum. I understand. Now, you know, for the longest I've been asking myself, why do some people get late to church? When I went all the way to Rangao and beyond Illyricum, I knew why. I now know why. The place is far. But the brethren are there. Why can't we take the fellowship near them and win more people to the Lord? Say amen. If we manage Sitam Makueni from here until it was established, now how about Wala? How about you? No, Ah, uh, we will take it for the Lord. Say amen. We will take that Illyricum to the Lord. I think the people of Rangao needs to have Illyricum streets or Illyricum estates. I've given you a business idea. If you have land there, go and say Illyricum estates. You will sell within a month. Say amen. So now, by the way, we are very sincere. We don't have a budget for this. But we don't have to work the way traditionally everybody works. Say amen. amen. We don't have to work traditionally the way everybody else works. We can work in a different way. People who are ambitious do not just necessarily follow tradition. They follow the Lord. Say amen. amen. If the Lord decides to use tradition, amen. If the Lord decides to trailblaze a new method, eh? So now, before we go there, all of us, the place needs to be made a bit neat and all that. So I want to make another appeal. I want to make another appeal. Say amen. amen. If you are here and you are a structural engineer or you are a surveyor, do we need surveyors? Yes. Or you are a planner or you are an architect or a civil engineer, and you say, Pastor, I, we can donate free of charge, pro bono. I can donate my expertise to help us plan that place. We need the, plan, the place planned to know we can put you know, the main church here. We can put the, the bathrooms here. We can put something to do with Sunday school here and all that. We need your help. Say amen. And maybe those are not your areas, but you know there are people who are not trained in some of those areas, but you do them anyway. And you are very good. 
Nobody should be locked, be, uh, um, uh, locked out. Please register at the information desk. We will sit down. We will go there. We will look at the place. We will make it, plan it well, clear it nicely. After everything is cleared and done nicely, and that should be done maybe in the next two or three weeks, then all of us, we will go there and the fellowship will begin. Hakuna kongoja. Mungu wakiongea unangoja nini? Baneza sifuwe sana. Mungu wakiongea unangoja? Usikuwa kama ndugu mwingine. Mungu waliongea owa dada flani. Na kadilidali, akadilidali, akadilidali, akakuja ndugu mwingine na motorbike. Na vision, akachukua uyo dada. Mungu wakiongea unangoja nini? Baneza sifuwe sana. We will not wait. And I know the Lord will do us well. The Lord will give us victory. I want to pray for you that as you go out there, I wish we had more time, I would have told you more. But as you go out there, that God will plant his ambition in you. Ambitions that achieve much are based on the will of God. When Paul is talking about how he has been ambitious, he quotes the book of Isaiah and he puts that word to be part of the foundation of his ambitious endeavors. Great ambitions are founded in the word of God. They are founded in the will of God. I pray as you go into the week, God will arouse the ambition within you that you'll be able to go beyond. And if your ambition has died, because some people, sometimes we lose our ambitions. Sometimes our ambitions go down. Why? Some, sometimes it's because of change, in, uh, the, the stage we are in, in life. When people are young, they are very ambitious. And if you are here and you are young and you are not ambitious, come for prayer. There is something wrong with you. They are ambitious. They want to conquer things. But sometimes with time and age, people seem to get less ambitious. Because maybe they feel they've achieved much. Maybe they feel like they are tired. Maybe they feel like the framework that supported them has been distorted. But listen to me. And I want this specifically to send this one to our golden edges. Some of you feel like your ambition has gone down. You can dream again. You can set new goals. Say amen. They, might have, they may call you retired, but before God, you are not retired. God can still plant something new. Paul was already old at this time. But he says, I have taken Jerusalem all the way to Lyricum. But he says, I'm not stopping there. I am going to Spain. Find a new field and do something uh, great. And I know the Lord will bless you. And the Lord will do you well. Say amen. Raise up two hand, your two hands. Let me speak a blessing over you. And now, Father, I bless your people. I pray that God, as they go into the week, let the ambitious goals that you have set in their lives, help them to burn and to achieve and to get to the place where you have ordained for them. I commission them in the presence of God that, Father, the fire you will light in them will be unstoppable. That, Jesus, you set them to be a people of great ambition. That they will be like John Wesley who said that he went to preach and he got fire so that people will come and get fire with him or they will watch him burn. I pray the fire and the ambition and the ardent desire to achieve that you put in them will be unstoppable. And that God, they will achieve much to the glory and honor of your name. In every area you are calling them. Some of them in, in, in marketplace. Some of them in different areas of life. I pray that that ambitious, that thing they wrote down. That Jesus, you will fire them up. That God, they will be able to achieve it. And nothing will stop them. I send you forth as a powerful people empowered by God to go and win and take territories to the holy, to the glory and honor of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Go and take territories. Amen. In Jesus' name.